seen anything like that. Wide right. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. The band is out on the field. He's going to go to the end zone. He's going to go to the end zone. The Bears have won. The Bears have won. Oh, my God. The Davy Mac Sports Program, where we talk the sports and other stuff, like rats. That's right. There are all kinds of rats, folks. There are the ones who crawl in the subways and spread disease, and they're the ones from Long Island who pretend they're straight when they really like cock. Beware of both kinds of rats. <laughs> Roy Harder, and here's your host, Mr. Eastside David McDonald, everybody. <laughs> Roy Harder. Hello, David. Week in and week out, these introductions get more and more peculiar, but uh, you are watching the Navy Back Sports Program. We are here live on a Monday, July the 22nd, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm here with Bobby Tamburo bang, and, bang. of course, Roy Harder, who literally, the reason why we're doing this show, how about the DMSP? The stick to itness and the work ethic of the DMSP the reason why we're doing this at 2 p.m. rather than noon, Roy literally was flying, ladies and gentlemen, and landed and had to zip in his car just to get here by 2 p.m. And we're yeah. like, Roy, we'll push the show back two hours, but you better be here at fucking 2 p.m. Otherwise, we're going to get fucking Big A to meet you at the airport with a silencer. <laughs> okay? Like, you know, we're going to do the old, uh, who was that one guy who be, who killed, uh, you know, he picked up one of Tony's uh, fucking ruffians in the Sopranos oh. <laughs> at the airport and then just fucking leaned over and shot him. He's shot like, him. always had a big mouth, man. <laughs> we were going to have Big A do that treatment on you. But Roy, like yeah. the fucking miracle, man. Today's hero, today's MVP lands on the ground, gets into fucking, what was it, JFK or Newark? Uh, today I was in JFK return, yes. JFK, a fucking traffic shit show. I yeah. have never been to JFK where you, you're <laughs> in and out nice and smoothly. I hate yeah. that airport. I'm from New Jersey. I prefer Newark. But JFK, he gets in there, he fucking gets in the car, he zooms over, and with literally 60 seconds to go, Roy Harder here. Now, we did it, I buddy, will... we did it. I like going to JFK like I like getting shot in the head. Oh, oh. I get it. Like like the president himself. JFK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good, that was good. Roy, um, yeah. But you are, we were just talking for, for the very brief 60 seconds or so before the program. Yes. Uh, when you got here and you, you're extra crazy today, you haven't slept a lot. You had to get up at like four o'clock in the morning or something. Where were we flying uh, from? Uh, I was uh, I was playing with the pie tasters and uh, I was flying. Uh, I was this morning. I woke up. Uh, wow. I was in West Virginia. West Oxycont Virginia. Yeah. Oxycontin County, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in other words, Roy Harder Town. Basically, yeah, yeah. you and Oxy's go back a long way. You yeah. you, you, you have a, a tighter bond with Oxycontin than fucking Rush Limbaugh did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little, little town. We played a little town called Fentanyl something or other. <laughs> <laughs> Fentanyl, West Virginia. Where yeah. Everyone has exactly two teeth. <laughs> um, that's hysterical. Yeah. So you're yeah. in fucking West Virginia. You were playing with pie tasters all weekend. Of course, pie tasters, friends of the Davey Mac Sports Program, the East Side Dave Universe for many, many years. They love friends, them so yeah. much. Big shout mm -hmm. out. How, how did the uh, gigs go? Gigs went great. We had a gig in, uh, uh, not Philly, Pittsburgh, uh, which was sold out. And then we did a private show in West Virginia. And they were both fantastic gigs. Just great guys. I'll tell you something interesting, you know, a little yeah. behind the scenes. Uh, so... The pie tasters, you know, they're all great guys, great guys. talented musicians. Steve, uh, Toby. And the, yeah. And the party doesn't really start until after the gig and you get back into the van, into the into the bus. Yeah. Because it Alan. becomes like, yeah, and it uh, it becomes like a whole, uh, it's like almost like an extended gig because oh, yeah. you know, most bands that I play with, you know, you get in the bus, everything's quiet, everyone goes into their little thing. Uh, not the pie tasters, man. <laughs> Those guys are like, all right. They crank up the tunes and and we're like, they're the real like, deal. They're, oh, they're, yeah. There is no phony baloney. They're they're the last of yeah. like what rock and roll bands 
were for the first, you know, four decades, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And yeah. then once we turn into the 21st century, every fucking rock band, like, like the lead singers have like, you know, uh, nutritional drinks. And right. they have they have like workout videos and shit. And that's what they fucking care about. The, the, yeah. the, the debacle and debauchery is yeah. gone from rock and roll. Roy, the highest I've ever been strictly on only marijuana. No, no, no LSD, which I've taken plenty of times or mushrooms and shit like that. Yeah. But strictly on THC and marijuana was the pie tasters were nice enough to invite me to a show they did with bad brains. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. In Asbury Park uh, at the Stone Pony. Fantastic gig. Crazy ass singer of Bad Brains. He's everyone talks about um, R. He's got initials. A A H R, I believe. H R. So, yeah. Yeah. He's the lead singer of the Bad Brains. H R. Me, Steve Jackson, lead singer of the Pie Tasters, and a couple others just passing the marijuana. I, w I couldn't tell them this because I felt like a fucking dork. But I go, yeah. hey, guys, I'm going to go get a beer. I had to walk outside and lay down in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't let that, I, I wasn't going to do it backstage. So I'm yeah. literally like, what the? I was so high. And I didn't drive there because I'm responsible. So I take yeah. a fucking cab or an Uber or some shit. And I fucking go, shit, what am I going to do? I can't let them see me. I go behind two fucking like minivans and shit and literally lay down for 15 minutes. I was so high. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't, I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> anything. Yeah. Yeah, I got I, here. Here's just, just a, an example. When I got into the bus last night, I, you know, we had a bit of a trip to get to the next uh, venue. So I was like, all right, we're going to make a, you know, it was a few hours. We're going to, we're going to make a pit stop guys like pit stop. And then, you know what they did? They handed me a fucking diaper. These guys wear diapers when they travel. So they don't have to fucking stop. They just piss <laughs> their, they piss their diapers, dude. <laughs> That's rock and roll, man. That is rock and roll. That's rock and roll. That yeah, is I, my, <laughs> that's my kind of band right there. I don't know if you want to taste that pie, though. No, I, in so fact, they should rename themselves the Piss Tasters. <laughs> that would be awesome. Or if you're like, or Roy, one of you can make your 13th cover band. And right, you, yeah. you, you can, and like me and Robert, will, I'll, I'll do the Steve Jackson part. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I I mean, do, I'll get in his suit. And, uh, he's a great singer, though, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's he's, he, he's he's tough to uh, he's tough to top, man. He, he brings he's the like, energy big time. Oh yeah, he's a force of nature, man. A force of nature. Well, let's get into a couple things real quick because you know who does not bring the energy? A show that I just discovered on ESPN, and I just want to remind ESPN or. Yes Network in New York, SNY, Fox Sports. If you want original sports talk that is simply more electric and enthusiastic than anyone out there, and it ain't fake enthusiasm, it's good old-fashioned ADHD, baby. <laughs> it's just good old-fashioned fucking... Mental illness. Mental yeah. illness. Fucked in the head then you should be considering putting the Navy Max Sports Program on your airwaves. We ain't begging. We're just pointing out that if you actually want numbers, ratings, and quality, and people, just some buzz, people to talk about your show, you might want to consider giving the DMSP a chance. But forget about the DMSP. I discovered a show on ESPN. Um, oh, my fucking email always does this. Hold on, Roy. Isn't it called Numbers on the Board, Dave? Numbers on the Board. That's what it's called. Numbers, thank you, Robert. The name of the show is called Numbers on the Board. Okay. And you have four gentlemen. I believe that they're talking about basketball. I believe that, uh, you know, because they're bringing up different NBA players. I want to now show you the least energetic show in the history of television. Not yet, Robert. Not yet. I want folks to look at the young gentleman, second to the right on the couch, who looks like Robert Griffin III, RG3, former quarterback. The young man is on his phone for the entire fucking segment. That's a no-no in our business, David.
When you're on your phone, you are letting everyone know, fuck you. You're not in, you're not important to me. This is important. This takes precedence over you. I don't care if me and Roy are sitting in a room. Yeah. I don't care if you're fucking in, in a conference meeting yeah. where you're all, you know, doing a business meeting. Yeah, hold on, hold on, thought, David. I just got slow down, Robert. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dave. I was I just in the middle of something. I know what you're doing, you sarcastic bastard. <laughs> he just called me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where it is. Uh oh, I hit my. The second you're on a phone, you're saying you mean nothing. My attention is to this since you're a, a boring snoozeville. But especially <laughs> when you're on television. You're on ESPN with three of the dullest people I've ever heard. And now you're checking your phone. This is the show that makes ESPN. Hey, ESPN, what the fuck? So I, I, I'm baffled as to why actual sports networks won't give the DMSP a little airtime. Is it simply fear? Or do you think that, like, what? We're going to fucking blow up your television studio? I'm being dead serious. What is the actual reason? Is it because I'm so fucking real and energetic and enthusiastic and passionate that it scares this weak-ass 21st century sensibility which is everyone's so sensitive and no one has personality anymore <laughs> to have personality in 2024 almost seems to be a negative to be like yo i'm fucking fired up for real because this is my personality it almost seems to be a negative now watch this fucking clip and try not to fall asleep dogsies It's definitely working, David. I'm asleep. I mean, he's checking his phone the whole time, Roy. He hasn't looked up once. Listen to how soft-spoken these guys are. Bobby, I'm not the hearing the audio, happened? but I, I can tell that it's a, it's a little he's bit... He's still uh, on his phone! RG3 is still on his phone. Wow. He finally put it down. That was a 41 second clip and that kid didn't look up from his phone once. And this isn't any kind of fucking racial issue. Don't be a bitch. What I'm saying is the younger people, look, I'm not one of those people who does the easy eh, generation, whatever they're, who, what are they? Millennials or no? Millennials. They're no, millennials. I think they're below. There's another group under millennials now. For Many 20 year olds. Millennials have gotten into their 30s. So these oh. guys are like tw clearly in their early 20s. Generation, Generation Z, Alpha? Are they Generation Z? I don't, wh whatever the fuck they are, this is across the board. This is literally across the board. I see people with zero personality, no charisma. Kevin Flynn says East Side Dave and Crew would only boost ratings for any network. Of course. Because this is what fucking entertainment used to be. Passion. Say something. Have an opinion. Imagine if Roy, go ahead, Roy and Robert, have a little discussion. I'm going to be one of the fucking hosts on, what is the name of the show? Pardon the uh, numbers or whatever the fuck Number on the board. Number, Number on, on the, board. the board. Go ahead, Roy. They should Roy have spelled board, B-O-R-E-D. Hmm. All hey, right. Roy, did you have AC at all your gigs this weekend? Uh, air conditioning? Yeah. Um, I don't even know. Because uh, I was at a theater and the AC broke, and I oh. think I lost 20 pounds on stage. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that conversation so much about the air conditioning and Robert <laughs> talking to him about whether he has AC. Like, just out of pride, if I was that kid, I would fucking insert myself into that boring conversation. Numbers on the board. Let's bring up the fucking enthusiasm a little bit. And how about a <laughs> producer or director telling the kids, 
Leave your fucking phones off the set. That's embarrassing. That was it. Play it again. It's seriously embarrassing, dude. They, they give shows to fucking. Anybody. fucking kid. The entire time. Wow. And the, the and and the soft, weak, quiet fucking shit. And when you bring energy to fucking shit these days, I'm sorry. I've noticed younger people are like, Wah. why is he yelling? Yeah. Why is he yelling at me? You see, you fucking phone addicted brain dead zombie morons i'm not yelling this is what real emotion and passion looks like the phone the social media has zapped any fucking energy out of you this is what pre-internet social media fucking people used to look like and talk like especially when it comes to sports you bring a you bring a little juice you bring a little fucking something. You're not the guy. And the other guys, I like this guy. I, he goes, one of the guys was like, uh, weren't you a big uh, Jason Tatum fan at one point? Yeah, yeah, I like Jason Tatum. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah well, he's now he's he's good. Yeah. Who else do you like? Um, I like Brooke Lopez. Oh yeah, that th th this was a part. He goes, I like Brooke Lopez. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, especially when he goes down low and posts up. Oh, Brooke Lopez is really good. <sighs> These days, um, you know, he shoots a lot from the out. He shoots a lot from the outside. And uh, bro, what were we? Bro, oh, Brooke Lopez? Yeah. Yeah. That's the show. That's the show. What a show. What a show that is. If you think oh about all God. your favorite or most memorable sports podcast or sports radio moments, none of them were a brilliant point made under your breath. Like, if you go back the Never. past 10 years and think Never. about, like, Never. what we remember, if it wasn't a controversy, Never. it was somebody who was at the top of their lungs, super well, enthusiastic. They, they, it's, and it's not like passion doesn't exist anywhere, even though I, I disagree from time to time with things that are said on first take, Stephen A. Smith at least understands that he has to bring energy, and they bring energy and debate to first take. I can appreciate that. I don't like this fucking too cool for school approach. Not when it comes to my sports, whether they're the athletes or the analysts. I don't fucking, the reason why I'm a, I hate the Yankee center fielder Trent Grisham is because he catches these fly balls like he's fucking Willie Mays Hayes in major league. He doesn't even like fucking, there's no effort there. I hate no effort. The one thing you can control in life, ladies and gentlemen, is your effort. Bring it every day. I do. Go. Come on, baby. Rising up. Back on the three. I took my time. I took my pleasure. I get the round. Of okay, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> We've gone a little bit crazy. Roy, I think you're affected. Your lightheadedness, you're traveling, you're clearly in a crazy zone, and I think it's influencing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing. One more point. One more Davy Mac bitch fest. I tweeted <laughs> this yesterday. If you are someone who doubts the veracity of something someone says on Twitter, don't use the phrase, I'll take things that never happened for a thousand, Alex. Beyond being now officially hack city, the overused 
hack shit. Alex Trebek has been dead for four years. He's not even the host of Jeopardy anymore. So when you're like using a fucking cliche that everyone's used 8,000 times, I'll take things that never happened for a thousand, Alex. Who are you talking to, a dead person? You should be saying I'll take things that never happened for a thousand and because Ken Jennings is the fucking host. Be a, but for regardless, quit it with that phrase. Just like the phrase wild, wild. Everything is wild these days. They almost killed the guy that had, wild. My mom was eaten by a shark yesterday. That's wild, man. Wow. My mom was eaten by a shark. That's all you have to say to me? Yeah, man. That was, that, that's wild. Wild, man. Wild. And I just, I saw, I've seen that phrase lately way too much on Twitter. I'll take things that never happened for a thousand dollars, Alex. I'm like, Alex Trebek is fucking dead. I know this is tangential, but Roy put me in a crazy zone today. And so you, did those guys parted my numbers down by the board. What's the name of the show, Robert? Number on the board. Number on the board. Boy, you think Trebek's actually dead? He's fucking dead. I'll take things that didn't happen for a thousand, Alex. He died in 2020. He faked his death. Oh. Now he's living on an island with Biggie and Tupac. Okay, Roy's allowed to be crazy, and I am. Let's not have just Robert <laughs> join the fucking, like, you should. want to be like the guys, no, no, Dave. No, 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 no. Just for, a, uh, just for, like, chemistry, you actually now have to be the normal person, you see? That was a miscalculation going into this episode, Dave. It's a miscalculation to throw up that he's fucking living on an island somewhere. Okay, that's just being weird for weird's sake. All right, please. Fair enough. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what to do with the goddamn fuck. So that's, but th that's a little basketball news. I have a couple other things real quick. The fucking, um, the goddamn American basketball team. They, ladies and gentlemen, won by one point. <laughs> wow. Close game. Over South Sudan. My fucking notes keep fucking uh, fading away. Because anytime someone replies to the fucking show prep email, and I fucking, uh, God damn it. Hold on. Robert, help me. Oh, here we go. I found it. All right. Here we go. I'm going to stick with it from now on. Um, yeah, one point, one goddamn point, South Sudan, they became, they became a country about, uh, I think it said something like 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Also, apparently South Sudan has very, very few indoor basketball courts. The Americans trailed. At the end of the game, it took a LeBron James shot with eight seconds to go. LeBron hit a layup. Otherwise, we were going to lose to the South Sudan. Wow. Listen, Team USA, you better get your fucking heads out of your asses. With all the shit talk that I do about the WNBA, I can't have the men blowing it. No, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm basically now insanely pro NBA because of how much I hate the WNBA. <laughs> so I can't have the fucking goddamn dream team part 50 go out there and start losing the fucking teams. They nearly lost to South Sudan. Remember when like the actual dream team in 92 played some team? like from Somalia or something like that, and they beat him by 70, and Charles Barkley elbowed one of the guys in the chest? Yes, absolutely. And they asked him why, and he went, because fuck them, that's why. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> it was like Team USA, we fucking hammered teams, and we elbowed and fucking beat the shit out of people. That's America. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Brittany Griner says she's happy to be playing for Team USA. She joined Team USA. Yeah. Good for of her. Of course, this is the uh, lady who was held in a uh, Russian prison for a while. She says it means everything to me. For me to now have the honor to wear it again and potentially win gold, icing on the cake. So there you go. Nice. Is, is, is anyone, are people going to be rooting for Brittany or not rooting for her? 
Well, I hear she's got a bit of uh, some contention uh, uh, against her, so I don't know how if she's a very popular player at this, at this point. I mean, she's very popular, but I don't know how well-liked she is. I mm. Mm. Interesting. Here, here's my thoughts. So the people who don't like her don't like her because she was very anti-America before she went overseas and then got exactly. arrested in Russia, right? So she got arrested. We negotiated, gave up you know, the merchant of death to get her back. I, I would argue the Merchant of Death can't dunk, so good trade there for us. Yeah, that's, that's but, actually, yeah, she, she's a better baller than him. <laughs> for sure. But now she's back and going, the, the first quote she gave to the press was, I'm never playing basketball internationally again unless if it's wearing the colors for the red, white, and blue. And now she's saying what an honor and privilege it is to play for the United States. It feels like lesson yeah. learned. Yeah, like yeah. she learned what she was supposed yeah. to. Why are we not rooting for her? That's my. That's actually my point too. She went to Russia. She went to fucking prison and said, "You know what? America isn't so bad after all." Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot more people of all different colors, races, creeds, ethnicities, genders, sexual orientations, blah 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 blah. Maybe they should spend a a, a, a couple of months in a Russian prison. Yeah, maybe or at least or at least on a bus with the pie tasters. <laughs> <laughs> Same effect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to be home. No, I know. I mean, yeah. How many gigs did you have? You had you said one in Pittsburgh, one in West Virginia. Yeah, yeah literally just two gigs. I was only gone for two days, David. It was a, it was a quite a hectic uh, little spree. Interesting. Um, by the way, Joe L. Embiid, weirdly enough, took to the post-game uh, press conference to uh, say a few words about LeBron. He says, LeBron now is not the LeBron that was a couple years ago. So first of all, interesting. Joel Embiid, by the way, playing for Team USA. He has uh, gained his American citizenship, and uh, he's on the team. So it's, he's on the team with LeBron, and he fucking talks a little shit like that. LeBron now is not the LeBron of a few years ago. It's going to make the uh, locker room a little awkward. Right, I would think so. Furthermore, is now Joel Embiid wants to talk like Mike Francesa. <laughs> That's a Francesca thing <laughs> where you're just constantly comparing the same guy to the same guy, just different years. You know, like LeBron tries, you know, like, okay, Le LeBron James 2024, okay, is, is, it's not LeBron James of 2017. Okay. Now LeBron James of 2017, okay, wasn't LeBron James of 2009. Okay, 2009 LeBron James, but other 2017 LeBron James. But 2009 LeBron James, not as good as 2010 LeBron James. 2010 LeBron James, but other 2012 LeBron James. But 2012 LeBron James, not as good as 2019 LeBron James. 2019 LeBron James, not as good as 2007 LeBron James. But 2007 LeBron James was as good as 2021 LeBron James, who's better than 2014 LeBron James, and not as good as 2015 LeBron James. Okay? I've been saying it for years. If you want to watch, if you want to talk to me about Mickey Mantle, okay, talk to me, okay? But Mickey in 1956 was better than Mickey in 1954, okay? Now, Mickey in 1954 was better than Mickey in 1964, okay? But Mickey in 1964 is better than Mickey in 1967, okay? But Mickey in 1967 is not better than Mickey in 1959, okay? Then Mickey in 1959 not better than Mickey in 1960, but Mickey in 1960 better than Mickey in 1961, which is better than Mickey in 1962, but not as good as Mickey in 1963. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Mike Francesa. This has been Mike the Go Fuck Yourselves, America. Um, yeah, I, I never liked when Mike would just compare guys to themselves and <laughs> it was always annoying to me, Robert. No, I'm genuinely curious which LeBron <laughs> of old he's referring to. Is it the 2008 and two th LeBron who just let Kobe carry the team? And take all the big shots along the way, or was it the 2012 Olympic LeBron who was the third average scorer on the USA team? Like he's never been good at the Olympics. FIBA isn't his game. He's big, he's strong, and he enforces his athleticism on people. 
now we're playing widespread out basketball. He's not going to be I, the glue. I feel like he's not just talking about LeBron on an Olympic basketball level. I think that's why I found the comments to be uh, a little bit alarming because he, this is a guy I thought, think he's talking about LeBron's overall game is what he's saying that it's gone down. That that's bad. But Do you I'll think say, Kerr's doing you, this on purpose? Like almost barely beating the Sudan. They've been questioning the lineups he's throwing out there. And now we've got press coming. Do you think he's trying to make, take the bullseye off the team U S a little bit? I, I mean, if he's doing that good on Joel Embiid, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a teammate thing to do. I don't know. But if I was LeBron, no matter what Joel Embiid, uh, Embiid's motivation is, I'd be like, what the fuck, motherfucker? I'm your goddamn teammate. <laughs> Furthermore, they just announced LeBron James is going to be the American flag bearer for the Olympics. Oh, He's going to be the guy uh, carrying the flag for our team. So Joel Embiid just shit all over the fucking number one representative of America in these uh, <laughs> Parisian Olympics coming up. Do you guys watch the Olympics? I do. I, I love all special sporting events. That's like my thing. Yeah, I do too. Um, I The Team USA basketball, like that's the one through connection I really have with my dad. When they play in the Olympics, we get together and watch like the championships games and stuff. One year we were at the beach and he stunk me into a bar underage because nobody was showing the game live other than that bar, you know. So I get really into it. My sister was a gymnast, so getting to watch the gymnastics is always fun. But nice. it's, it's hard to beat that. You come home, throw the TV on, and there's sports on that matter. How about you, Roy? Uh, nope. I don't think I've ever watched a single episode of the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a series like Game of Thrones or The Wire. It's you would a single day. You've never watched a single day of the Olympics. I can't say I have, David. No, just, <laughs> I, I guess I forget when it's on or. Uh, no. I mean, it's over two straight weeks every four years. And you almost can't get a, away from it. Is one yeah. you never I even know, a, I, back in the day, it, Carl Lewis or anything yeah, like that. Maybe it's the thing about the amateur sports. I'm not a big fan of amateur mm. sports. You know, I would have I thought like someone of your age would have been like into Jesse Owens and all the things he accomplished. You know, you were just a child when Jesse Owens won that uh, gold medal there, right? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, at the Munich 1976 yeah. uh, Olympics, 1936 uh, no, German okay. Olympics. <laughs> Didn't he kind of embarrass some people that Roy's father was a big fan of, Dave? Oh, he embarrassed a lot. Hitler was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> How is this guy winning every race? And he was dominant. He was blowing fuckers away. If you look at Jesse Owens, it wasn't close. He Some of those races, he was beating these guys by 5, 10 feet, which is quite significant for a fucking Olympic sprint. What races were those, David? <laughs> uh, the 400 meter, the 800 meter, the relay thanks for, race. Thanks, thanks for the clarification. <laughs> now, um, you know what's crazy about that, Dave? What? So Hitler, Hitler did not want him to win. So he put out no German company could let Jesse Owens wear their product. And the, the big shoe guy at the time, it was Adidas and his brother who owns Puma. Like they split and became those companies. And they snuck into Jesse's practice and handed him a pair of shoes. And like Jesse got to sprint in these guys' shoes because they were like, it's more important that the best athletes compete than it is to, you know, stick to whatever program it is. And I thought that was kind of cool. But then Jesse Owens came back to the US and we hadn't done civil rights yet. And in Germany, Hitler wanted nobody to know what was going on. So he would talk about how much better he was treated in Nazi Germany than he was in the United States. I mean, wow. there, there was a lot of problems in the world at that time. I'm just going to chalk it up to uh, <laughs> like we have improved in a lot of areas. I think that if you look at some of the things, uh, you know, we should we should be happy. But really, we shouldn't be. The 90s was so perfect. And then everything after the 90s, the 90s was the last great decade where people yeah. actually thought we can transcend labels like we can transcend race, sexual orientation, gender, so on and so forth by rejecting labels and just becoming one people. All our favorite rock bands and rap groups and everything were always about rejecting labels. And we were one. We were more unified as a people. Yeah. And since we've uh, everyone wants their labels, we're more divided than ever.
But hey, fuck it. Soapbox <laughs> Dave is is done. Soapbox <laughs> Dave is over. Okay. Just I'm just letting you know. It's so simple. Okay. All the labels that are underneath with the social media. Blah, 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 blah. That's dividing us all. <laughs> it's not really hard to understand. Yeah, you were saying we even the ju- music. As a society, out. though, are we ever going to have a thing where we go, what's next? Like, bigotry bad, racism bad, sexism bad. What's next? We all, like, we reckon the vast majority of Americans recognize that. What's next now? What, what's the next plan? What's the next phase of society and humanity in America? My thought would be going past all that shit and just becoming one people again. Like in the 90s, just being like, we can, you can make jokes about people. You can fucking get fired up about people. You can be opinionated because you, you, you understand that everybody's one. But you know what? I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking it's, idiot. It's true. I'm not going to argue with you, David. But, you know, we have uh, we, we back in the 90s, we had a one single point source of culture. Everybody watched Seinfeld. Everybody watched Friends. We all talked about the next day. Nowadays, we got, you know. Everyone's on their own little thing. True. Literally, that's, I mean, literally, we just showed a clip of a kid actually on television who was still on his phone. Like, I mean, seriously, this is what I'm saying. The attention and the fucking, God damn, it's, it's, it's fucking destroyed. It's making our brains decay. We have such small attention spans now. A kid's on television, and that's not exciting enough for him? He's got to be on his phone, too? Fuck you! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with the New York Yankees. (laughs) What? (laughs) What, David? Uh, Wait a minute. I'm going to watch the fucking games. Let's see. They're playing right now, Roy. Do I even fucking give you the score? Yankee, oh, Yankees five, Rays one. You know what? Forget what I said. The Yankees are back in, baby. (laughs) (laughs) No, you know, this game is is a little fool's gold-y to me. Fool's gold-ish. We discussed Clay Holmes, uh, I believe, last week. Did we not? That Clay Holmes is not to be trusted. The Yankee closer will not deliver in the postseason he he clay holmes is good for two walks in inning folks and the only the reason why his numbers were good at the beginning of the year is because when you pitch against shitty teams you can walk a couple guys and still figure a way to get it you know get a double play and a strikeout and you're done but that's just not the way it is against good teams and when you're playing in the postseason you only play good teams and when Clay Holmes plays good teams, the fucking two walks come home to fucking destroy the Yankees every single time. And yet, we just had an all-star break, an all-star game, a home run derby. What kind of trades do you think Yankees general manager Brian Cashman has made? Has he picked up any bullpen arms? Has no, he sir. improved the offense? Because... Unless their names are Aaron Judge and Juan Soto, they can't hit for shit. So, did he make any moves during the All Star break, Roy? Uh, I don't. Not that I'm. Not that I witnessed, David. Good point, Roy. He did not. <laughs> he did not make one goddamn trade. One fucking anything. No moves. Like we've seen year in and year out. Brian Cashman freezes at critical moments. He doesn't pull the trigger anymore. Yeah, we got Juan Soto. He finally made Juan Soto's the, the, the only good trade Brian Cashman has made in five fucking years. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to give Brian Cashman some credit for making really one of the most obvious decisions ever. Get an all-star lefty. Who's good for 340 home runs a year? Oh, gee whiz. That's, yeah, you, you're, you're not exactly Billy Bean doing fucking Moneyball, recreating shit with Jonah Hill, you fucking stooge. <laughs> the Yankees are all about promoting your best minor league stars and filling in the roster with all stars, not Joey Gallo. 
God damn motherfucker, motherfucking bitch, slut, cunt, bitch, motherfuck. This is what I sound like when I play Mario Kart. Robert's know, Robert knows. It's I know if, if I, I call if, Dave and he's on the I phone. If I get screwed over, because I play on the most elite level of Mario Kart now, Roy, I'm, I'm up to 10,300 points. Whoa, impressive. Let me David. explain to you. Let me explain. Well, I play online. When you get to 9,000 points in online Mario Kart, they put you into the top level in the world. You play against only the best. Today I'm playing the fucking Mario Kart. I'm in second place. I'm playing against the entire country of Japan. I'm in second place, Roy. And just getting second place, Roy, that's going to, on this level, that's going to get me like 25 points. That's okay. how you, you the, the, like top fives, Roy. It's all about top fives. Got you it. get top fives, you start accumulating points. So yeah. in other words, playing against these guys, who, I mean, almost all of them had superior scores than mine, and yet I was in second, right? Yeah. I'm about 10 feet away from the finish line. Lap three, that's it. Three out of three. I'm about 10 feet away when who, lo and behold, gets hit with a first place shell. The guy in second place. <laughs> oh. I swear to God, I was going to cancel the show today after that. <laughs> I was going to be like, I'm just too aggravated. Roy, <laughs> Roy's not here. The, 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 you know, Robert's high. <laughs> no denial there. You're about as quiet as Brittany Grider. No, surprisingly, <laughs> I'm not high today. I'm out of papers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a bowl, a pipe? What? Bong's what kind dirty. of fucking Robert are you? What, what happened to Robert? I mean, the bong's dirty. I don't want to clean it out right now. I didn't anticipate being out of papers. I just reached in and there were none today. And I went, well, guess we're doing this one. Fly and sober. <laughs> you kind of remind me. You you should be like the third Cheech and Chong brother. You should, you, you, you should be Chung. Cheech, Chong, and Chung. I don't, I don't know if I like Robert Chung. Robert Chung. It's a little close to Chunk. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I can't do it with fucking Cashman anymore. I can't. I'm sweating my ass off, but you know what, Brian Cashman? Put yourself, put your little fucking weasel ass on the Shizer list, you dick. Shizer, Shizer, you're the ones that we despise. Ah. Hear what I'm saying, Cashman? You little fucking dick. You fucking third <laughs> dick. I can't stand him anymore, man. I can't, I can't look at him. I can't. Can they turn the page? Does anyone know that they have Brian Sabian working in the Yankee organization? It was the San Francisco Giants general manager who gave them two decades of success, including winning the World Series in 2010, 12, and 14. Three fucking championships recently and in the last 15 years. He works for the Yankees. Fire Cashman and put Brian Sapien in charge. Hal Steinbrenner, you fucking nincompoop. <laughs> Roy, what's the best Pie Taster song out there? What's their big hit? Um, give us a little I, taste. Ma Ma Just give us May. anything. Bring yeah. us another beer. We we need it. Uh, now I don't even know the songs anymore. That just goes to show you. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, Maggie May is a big one. That's a that's a real rap rabble rouser. Wake drinker. up, Maggie! I never looked down. I'll say to you, not the Rod Stewart version. Oh. Uh, Maggie May, bring us another beer. We need another beer. Oh, I like that one, Maggie May. I, that, no, I I know I I know the song you're talking about. Sure, it's a, it was a big hit for them. Yeah. That's a fucking good song, Roy. Wait, the Pie Tasters have a song about beer? <laughs> One or two, yeah. They have a couple of songs about beer and a couple of songs about marijuana. No, and are they like sad, but they play them like with this upbeat music behind them and you can't really tell? Uh, like a like, a, like now, a murder ballad, yeah, it's set the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On Saturday, I had Olympics of my own. My mom would not. Um, she forced me to keep playing sports all day long. It was like 86 miles an hour. And <laughs> my brothers were over with their kids. So my mom goes, she lives on Fairway Muse. Um, uh, it's a little, you know, old person uh, place, but also has a golf course. 
over tennis 55 court. community. Yeah. Yeah. Tennis courts, which they also can convert into pickleball, a pool. So nice. anyway, she, we, we, we go out there, we start playing some fucking, uh, chipping the ball, playing a little golf. She goes, okay. She goes, all right, now put the golf clubs away. I have re I have reserved the pickleball courts for three thirty. It's 88, 90 degrees. We got to go on asphalt here. Oh. But you know who's going to bring the fucking juice every time. I don't care if it's this show. I don't care if I'm competing against children. At pickleball, I want to show you something. Roy, are you familiar with Boris Becker? He's German. Uh, That's why I thought maybe you would, you, you would know him. Very familiar, actually. Yes, quite familiar. Famous. Famous for five points. He was a famous athlete who married a black woman. Yes, uh, but, but that, what kind of athlete was he? Uh, he was a German athlete with a, a ginger athlete. With, sure but what say. sport did he play? Oh, uh, tennis. There you go. Five yeah. points. I was trying to figure out where you were leading me, David. No, I just, I'm just looking at what, what kind of what sport did he play. You're right. Boris Becker. Yeah. And he was famous for diving. Sometimes. And tax Cutting evasion. Control. Don't forget the tax evasion. <laughs> you spent some time in prison for that one. Look at that. Oh. oh. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. I took a little slide there, huh, David? For the pickleball slide? Can you see that? Yeah, that looks like a little wound there. A little wound? A little How many boo -boo. stitches? I was bleeding all over the goddamn pickleball court. I fucking laid out. Full on extension dive to get to a ball, got yeah. to it. It barely went over the net, but it did. It dropped in, and Davy Mack and, and company won the point. Whoa, nice. But I was Hell bleeding yeah. all over the pickleball court. Ooh. So then my mom says, All right, here, here's what you should do go in the pool with the chlorine and wash it off. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's rules against like open wounds. And she's like, yeah. No one's going to pay attention. So then I go into the pool, and my mom then demands that I, I race my son, Stanley. In fucking pool. I'm like, well, that, how many goddamn things are we going to play? That's the third sport. I literally am trying to leave. It's like a triathlon I'm like, here. I'm like, all right, mom, I got to get back home. Me and Stan, we got a little wrestling event we're going to watch tonight. We watched the TNA pay-per-view in case you're wondering. But anyway, oh, we go. I'm we got little... you let him watch that. <laughs> I waited, till my kids, I, I waited until my kids were 18. Total <laughs> nonstop action wrestling, Roy. Oh, Not it's an ass. Oh, I apologize, David. Yes, you should. <laughs> so I go to fucking, uh, so I'm like, oh, shit. Now I got to raise Stanley. We were, I'm okay. Me and Stan, we, we, we got to go, mom. We got to go. She goes, okay, one last thing. She forces us to enter a goddamn cornhole. Tournament. <laughs> so we got to play cornhole the whole time. It's again, 90 degrees. I played <laughs> golf, fucking intense pickleball. I was forced to do laps in the pool and swim against my son. And then I got to be outside in 90 degrees with fucking mosquitoes eating my goddamn ass. Wow. The McDonald Iron Man. Uh, you know, I hate to do this because she is my mother. Mm. Robert says no. You don't, you don't do that to your mom. <laughs> All right. Think of the you could win. I'm going to then let Beanie Mac know. You've avoided the Scheiser list today. <laughs> I can't promise next week, Beansy. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't promise next week. First of all, she's texted me like three times today. I mean, like, while we're on the air. I'm not the part in the numbers, guys. I didn't fucking hear this, but my mom was texting me. What a day on Saturday. I'm going to text her back. Yeah, I can't even feel, I feel my legs. <laughs> I was hoping Beanie was trash talking with her text. Like, how's your knee, pussy? Yeah. <laughs> how come your no. mommy didn't put a, how come your mommy didn't put a bandaid on that uh, boo boo? I don't know. And, and, and the other thing that I was bothered by laying out and cu cutting my knee and bleeding all over the pickleball court is that I was accused of, oh, well, that was unnecessary. You didn't need to dive there. I'm like, did you see where the ball was? I had to dive. And you're giving me shit 
for diving on our asphalt. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mommy, you're on the Shizer. Shizer, Shizer, you're the one that we despise. Ah. Now, 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 she was going to escape, Robert, until you, Robert, reminded me that she doubted my the sincerity. The, she doubted the need for me to, to dive. Well, I'm not diving on asphalt in the fucking summertime, you no. know, for, for fun. I'm doing it for wins. And Dave, that's pertinent information. She made you that way, and now you're you're diving to win, and she doesn't like that? She's exactly. literally raised you to be a competitive person. What are we doing here, Beanie? Oh, my God. You want to talk about the person who was... She fucking called a footfall on me when, when we were playing cornhole. I had to play. It was me and my son versus my mom and her sister. And I'm going to be honest. Aunt Deli is a fucking ringer. She comes in. I don't know how to play. She's, she's exactly like my mom. She's like practically a twin. Okay. So she comes in. I don't know how to. I've never played. I've seen this before. Oh, okay. Next thing you know, Aunt Deli. Boom, boom, boom. Everything going in. <laughs> Like fucking Michael Jordan against the Portland Trailblazers in 92 where he's hitting the threes and he's like, I don't know how I'm doing it. <laughs> My Aunt Deli was hitting fucking 25-foot threes all game. Though, and wow. Stan and I barely won. We won 32-30. Wow. Okay. It sounds like you almost got hustled there. Oh, that's what it was. The white man can't jump scenario with Deli as uh, the goddamn Woody Harrelson type of gimmick. Bullshit. <laughs> Fuck with me. Deli has to go home to her Rosie Perez. <laughs> How you lose the gun money, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, hard knocks, Giants, by the way. Haven't been talking a lot about it because it's, you know, I love hard knocks as we all do. If you're a sports fan, if you're I mean, if you're an NFL fan and you don't watch hard knocks, what, what are you doing? It's just so fucking great. However, you know, the training camp hard knocks is is the best, I think. Even though they've been doing regular season hard knocks the last couple of years. And those have been cool. They did a Miami Dolphins regular season hard knocks. That was cool. Hey, listen, more hard, hard knocks, the better. But the Giants' whole thing is hard knocks off season, where we're following the Giants' general manager, Joe Shane, around. And what happened on this third episode actually has finally gotten some uh, people talking, which is Saquon Barkley said the Giants never made him an offer. And on episode three of this fucking show, Joe Shane is offering him $12.5 million for three years. He matches the Philadelphia Eagles. He says to the agent, Saquon says this is where he wants to be, right? We'll match the Eagles, 12 and a half for three. Hangs up the phone. Next thing you know, Saquon's going to Philly. I'm worried now that the Giants don't know what they're doing because there's a scene in the show where Giants owner John Mara fucking tells GM Joe Shane, Saquon better not go to the Eagles. I won't be able to sleep if Saquon goes to the Eagles because they're a division rival. And next thing you know, there goes Saquon to the Eagles. Sometimes in sports, nothing makes sense. I'm sorry. But how the fuck did the Giants give $42 million to Daniel Jones? And they can't pony up 13 a year for Saquon, which probably would have absolutely gotten him back to the Giants. Now, don't get me wrong. Saquon's a scumbag because the Giants, he is, Robert, because the Giants matched the offer. And the agent said, you show us the money. Saquon wants to be a Giant for life. But nevertheless, the Giants are scumbags too. Why did Daniel Jones get $42 fucking million? And how can you not have just a million and a half so that you can put it up to Saquon 13 mil a year for three years, which definitely gets him back? What are we fucking doing? Because anyone who's watched the Giants knows this, and this is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. The Giants have won football games with Saquon on the field 
and without Daniel Jones on the field. Tommy Cheesesteaks or whatever the fucking guy's name was. The Giants have not won games when Daniel Jones is on the field and Saquon isn't. Saquon Barkley is the Giants' best offensive player. Was. Easily. The $42 million to Daniel Jones was a complete choke job. And why was Saquon's contract up? Why did they have to sign him again? Yeah, I don't know. Because they put the franchise tag on him the year before. They wouldn't give him a super max, and they refused to bite then. Like, honestly, I think they kind of deserve it, but they're probably going to luck out because he's at the end of his peak. He's not one of these guys who runs like he's going to be around forever. He's not an Adrian Peterson. He goes to Philly. And, and and becomes a you know and becomes a difference maker and they and they win a, a Super Bowl then it is on the then then I have a real issue. Also, Saquon doesn't need to be your classic 1980s 90s running back who gets the ball 25 30 times in the backfield. Saquon Barkley should be a Marshall Falk getting the ball 15 times in the backfield but eight to ten times with screen passes and little slants. He's nearly as good of a receiver as he is a running back, so fucking have him be that guy, and then you don't take the punishment that these other running backs take. So then his fucking durability and his talent is up there a lot longer. That's just me. That's why you're the master. I know. You know what, Roy? I really am the sports Master. 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 You're the one that we've been after. Finally, Aaron Rodgers mm. says, you know, motherfucker, who gives a shit if I missed minicamp? He goes, minicamp, it's all bullshit. Now, minicamp is, was mandatory. Mm. And Robert Sala, the Jets head coach, said Rodgers was unexcused. Hmm. And so they ask Rogers about it, and he's like, "No, come on, man. They're like glorified practices. It's just no, no. It's bullshit. It's not. It's not really minicamp. But at the same time, it's like no. I mean, it's called. It was called a minicamp. It's called mandatory minicamp. It's fucking minicamp. You can't change the definition. So I gotta tell you, the Jets." They're they're looking like they're going to be another disaster this year unless they just get out to like an eleven and two start. Aaron Rodgers has more power than your stupid head coach, and yet Aaron Rodgers has played four snaps for that team. That's a the problem. fifth if you count as Achilles. No, oh, I know, I know what the problem is. The thing is, if I was a fucking guy who was paid fucking some shitload crazy amount of $50 million and I got injured after four goddamn snaps and missed the whole season, maybe I wouldn't be such a mouthy prima donna. 100%. I was just making a joke that there were five snaps. The fifth was his Achilles tendon snapping. I know. I know what you were doing. I'm hot. Can I give you one more Eastside Dave sports story that I don't know if you've seen yet, Dave? Did you hear about the flag controversy that happened? Did you say flag? Because we don't do those. No, with an L. Okay. Like what LeBron's carrying. So Ukraine fans, so the Ukraine was playing Bosnia, and Ukraine fans were trying to make a statement. So they took the Russian flag and turned it upside down to, like, offend Putin and say, like, oh, there's problems with Russia. Right. But... Bosnian fans thought it was a Serbian flag, who I guess they have a problem with. So they attacked the Ukrainian <laughs> fans for putting the flag upside down. <laughs> what's, wrong, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> I don't get it. The, the like it world, turned into the world a- is no, we, we've all lost it. Everyone <laughs> is such a fucking lunatic, and yet they can't see it. And so it's just easier to point the finger at everyone else and fucking call every. It's your fault. That I'm so angry. Uh huh. Fucking morons. <laughs> just like a full brawl, too. Like they had to be, the security had to get involved. It was bad. Dumb assholes. <laughs> All right, look. That's it. We're done. Okay. We're going to now take this beautiful audio and video and we're going to uh, remaster it. 
And then we will upload the remastered version uh, to all the podcasting networks, audio podcast, your iTunes, your Spotify's, Amazon Musics. We want you to subscribe and share and, and make sure you're given the reviews and this and that. YouTube, it should be on later this evening. Uh, it will be on later this evening. So make sure you go into the remastered thing of that. Give that a thumbs up and uh, that'll do it. Okay. And thank you, Roy Harder, for getting here. Get it, uh, buddy. Flying all the way from West Virginia and doing the show on the same day. Amazing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bobby Tamburo, thank you as always. Oh, you're the best, Dave. And to all the East Side Dividends out there, we love you. We thank you. I'm Davey Mack. It's the Davey Mack Sports Program. Good night, everybody. Yeah.